The key for any type of preparation for filleting is a good knife. So invest in a good knife. This is a one that was made for Rapala and it's got a nice hard steel blade. You've got to keep that blade super, super sharp. One of the things I learned a few years ago is that no matter how the blade looks, the blade has micro serrations all along the edge that when you cut a few times, they bend over. And you can use a steel like this. A lot of people have these in their butcher blocks and they've never used them because they don't know what they're for or they don't know how to use them. The steel is a hard metal piece that allows those serrations to be straightened out. And you can literally feel if they're, if they're folded over or not if you run your finger along it. So I usually hit it a couple of times and I usually only do two or three fish between sharpening. Now the way you're going to fillet this fish is you're going to make an incision right here behind the gill plate and you can feel the bones in there with the tip of your, your knife. You can feel the backbone and then you're going to turn it like this and you're going to run right down the backbone. Um, the, the bones come straight up and down just like you see in the cartoons that you watch on television and you're going to go right down this, this side of the fin, the dorsal fin here and you can feel the tip of the knife running right down the edge there of the ribs and everything. Then you're going to open this up with your thumb and take your time. It's a skill and you can use the tip of that knife to work right around the ribs. You can see the ribs right here and you're going to use that sharp knife to work around the ribs and work your way down. Let the knife do the work. If you have to push then your knife is not sharp enough and then once you get beyond the ribs you press the knife right down on the backbone and you finish out just like that. Now on trout, you don't scale them and you don't fillet off the skin side. Trout, the trout flesh falls apart when you cook it. And so you need to leave the skin on in order to keep the meat intact, but you don't eat the skin. You'll only eat from the meat side and you'll leave the skin on the plate when it's done. Now I'll do the other side here real quickly and I'll do the same thing. I'll cut right behind the gill plate. I'll cut down and then I'm going to go right down this side of the dorsal fin. Sometimes I'll just put my knife right in on that side of the dorsal fin and I'll feel the bones, I'll feel the ribs and I'll work it down and then I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to work right down the ribs. Now I'm going to lay that knife down and I'm going to take it right through there. And there's your fillet, a nice big beautiful piece of um, um, trout that looks a lot like salmon, same family. Throw the guts into a garbage bag. Keep that garbage bag separate from your other garbage and a lot of people are concerned about fish because of the smell. They don't like cleaning fish and they want to, they don't know what to do with the, the leftovers, the throwaway. Um, what we do in my household is we bag it all up in a nice clean bag and we put it in our freezer and then when it's garbage day we pull it out of the freezer and throw it away and have the garbage man pick it up and then you don't have to worry about the smell. So we'll do this one right here and then we'll have uh, four fish that we'll have filleted out. Now there are small hair bones in the trout that's above the rib cage. Now if you're going to grill that trout uh, outside on a grill, a lot of times these will not dissolve. But if you're going to bake them or if you're going to fry them, make trout almondine, these, these small bones will actually dissolve and you won't have to worry about them in the meat. Uh, they're just real tiny bones that come off the top side of the ribs, but you don't have to worry about them because they will dissolve when you cook them. I'm going to start to rinse them all. You want to rinse all your fillets real good. One of the things that I have in my house and makes a great complement to trout that's baked or trout that's fried is rice. And we have a rice cooker 
You can get them at most stores now. They're pretty popular. It's real simple. So if you're a man, you're really going to enjoy this. What I do is take one cup of rice, put it in the rice cooker. And if you can make it on the stove, make sure that you put it at simmer and you cook it really, really slowly because rice can very easily scorch. One cup of rice. You're going to do two cups, two cups of water. Need a little bit more. Two cups of water. Now what we're going to want to do is get about a tablespoon of butter. And butter has the uh, tablespoon markings right on it, so you cut right through there. Put a tablespoon of butter in there. And we're going to get a little bit of salt and sprinkle a little bit of salt. I'd say about a teaspoon. So if you need to measure, you can measure. All I have to do is plug it in, turn it on, and it's cooking. So we've got rice cooking. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to have candied carrots with this. And we'll go over here and we'll start the carrots. And I've got some carrots that I've already gotten out of a package, but you buy them prepackaged. And I've got about a quarter of an inch of water in the saucepan. So put that in the saucepan. Then I'm going to put in two tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to put in about one eighth cup of a brown sugar. You, brown sugar you just estimate according to how much caramel that you want in your uh, carrots because this will make a nice brown uh, sweet mixture and so you can put more brown sugar in it if you want but I don't want a whole lot of brown sugar in that. I'm going to put the lid on that and I'm going to turn that just real low and I'm going to stir it a little bit here before it gets going. Now we've got our carrots preparing to boil. We've got it low so that we don't scorch anything. We've got our, our rice cooking and we're ready to start preparing the fish. Now what I have is a, a, a large frying pan. I've got about an eighth of an inch of oil in it. Sometimes I go up to a quarter of an inch of oil. Now we're going to put these fillets in here and we're going to brown them on one side and then we're going to flip them and brown them on the other side. We're going to turn the fire on to a medium heat and um, we don't want this to heat up too fast because we've got to prepare our breading for our fish. The fish is going to be breaded and it's going to be fried and then right in this saucepan right here I'm going to put almonds and lemon juice and butter and that's going to be our sauce that we're going to pour over the trout and almondine. So we'll begin with the crackers. Real simple again. These are saltines. You buy them in the packages. You're going to want to crush them. And they actually crush real well if you put them down like that in one fell swoop. And you've practically got powder. That's going to be the last coating that we're going to use before we put the fish into the oil. We're going to use one egg and one quarter cup of milk. And this is going to be a mix that we're going to coat our fish in. Add our milk in with our egg. And I'm going to pour that right into this larger bowl that will allow me to get my fillets down into the egg milk mixture. In this bowl right here in this open plate, and you want to use a shallow pan, makes it easier for dredging the fish. Then we're going to use this glass pyrex dish for our first dredging area. We're going to actually going to dredge the fish twice. We're going to start with a flour salt mixture, then we're going to dip them into the um, egg milk mixture and then we're going to dredge them into the crumbs that I've, I've made from the saltine crackers. We want the fillets to be 
patted dry with a paper towel. And so what I'll do is I'll take these fillets out and then I'll lay them and I'll pat them dry here. But before I do that, I'm going to use a half cup of flour that I've already pre-measured. And I'm going to use a quarter teaspoon of salt which isn't much and you can add a little bit more to your taste but I'm gonna put kind of a piled high and I'm just going to get a fork here a clean dry fork mix that up and that'll be my first dredging mixture Now before we put the fish on the fry, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take our saute dish and make our almond mix. Now this will go on top of the fish and we'll start by browning two tablespoons of butter with a quarter cup of almonds. And we'll mix that together. Now while the butter's melting, I'm going to take some of these trout fillets and I'm going to use this paper towel to get them nice and dry. They don't have to be completely dry, just we don't want water coming off of them because we want this flour to stick. Get another couple of paper towels here. Oh, aren't those beautiful fillets? Those are fantastic. Now this whole meal will only take you about an hour to prepare, maybe less. But remember, if you really want to make your wife and your kids happy, there will be one step that you need to take care of, and that's at the very end, and that's cleaning up. What I always say is get everything that you're going to need to cook with out, check all your ingredients, make sure you've got them, get all of your measuring cups and all of your plates and everything out. Then you're ready to do the work and while you're cooking you can clean up as you go and then at the very end there won't be much to clean up. Well our butter and almonds are getting nice and toasty brown and so we're going to take our two tablespoons of lemon juice and we're going to add that. And we're going to stir that and that's going to make the delicious sauce that's going to go on top of our fried trout fillets. So we're going to let that cook just a little bit and it'll be ready to serve up. Alright, well now it's time to fry these fillets. Now we're going to dredge both sides even though you don't eat the skin side. You need to fry that meat all the way through. Cover that with crackers. And lay those in the hot oil. And you can tell that oil is hot because it is frying. I think I'll dredge four or five of these. Get them ready. I'll do two waves because this frying pan will probably only hold about four fillets. Turn them in those cracker crumbs. Lay it in there. Put it right in there. Turn them in those cracker crumbs. Lay it right in there. Now we're going to want to turn these. Now that one already got done very quickly. Put that in there. It's breaking apart. Turn those. The fish will fry really quickly. Set that right there. 
you'll notice that these almond slivers are getting nice and toasty brown. It looks like my carrots are just about done. They look pretty good. We'll stick a fork in one of those in just a second. Now these fillets are ready to pull. I'm going to put a little bit of paper towel down so it will soak up any excess grease. Those look good. I'm going to turn my heat down a little bit before I put in my next wave of fish. Use a paper towel to mop up any oil that's on the top of them and those are ready. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my almond sauce, set it off here. My other favorite recipe that will also be one of your family's favorite recipes is a lemon pepper uh, trout that's been baked. I'm going to use this cookie sheet and I'm going to slice up a lemon in real thin slices. Now what we want to do is spray a little bit of canola oil or any type of spray for cooking. And this will keep the skin from sticking to the, the um, cookie sheet, so we want to put a little bit of oil on there. I'm going to take my trout fillets that I've dried with paper towel. I'm going to lay those skin side down. We're going to bake these at 350 degrees, and it probably will not take but about five to ten minutes. I don't know if I've ever timed it. We want to take our butter and put that right on the fillets. Now you can use a brush for this. A lot of people like to use a brush for this. I find that the brush is really hard to uh, clean up, so I just like putting it on with a spoon. Make sure it's got a nice coating of butter on it. Then I'm going to take this six pepper seasoning and I'm going to sprinkle this right on here. Now this is uh, six pepper seasoning by Durkee. There's other kinds. You may have other, other preferences. And put pepper on it to your own particular flavor, to your own taste. Now I'm going to take these slices of lemon and I'm going to lay them right on top of these fillets, just like that. Oh, that's going to be so good. Now it's ready to put in the oven and bake at 350 degrees. And this is a great meal to prepare for family or friends because it makes a great presentation on the plate. It's easy to check to see if it's done. You can put a fork in it and if it flakes and separates from the skin, it's done. You can pull it out, set it on the plate with a bed of rice, put carrots or a side salad in there. It's beautiful and you'll really impress your family, you'll impress your friends. And remember, your goal is to have your wife or your husband want you to go fishing. So this is a great way to start. Prepare a meal. Make sure that you take care of all your business afterwards. Clean up your kitchen you'll be in great shape. Now we've got our almond butter lemon mixture. It's going to be nice and toasty and delicious. I'm going to put that in this bowl right here. And I'm going to grab a slotted spoon right here. We've got our candied carrots. Our candied carrots. I don't know what the proper way to say that is. They're not too sweet. They're not like candy carrots in the fact that they don't have a um, thick sauce, but they have a nice sweet flavor to them. We'll serve those up. Now the rice is done. I just added some salt 
to taste, and I'm going to dish this up in this nice serving plate. This is a great complement to fried trout, uh, trout almondine, and to the lemon pepper trout that we're baking in the oven. Now we've got our fried trout, and we're going to serve this up with this almond sauce that we made earlier. And we're going to pull the trout that is in the oven. And that looks good. Let's set that right up here. Use this fork. We can check the meat, make sure that it's flaky. Yeah, that's perfect. That's great. Now that is a meal that you can be pleased to serve. It's beautiful. Uh, we've got some selection here. You don't have to serve both of these types of uh, preparations when you're feeding friends or family, but that gives you a couple of different, a couple of different options when you're going to serve up what you've caught. Well, it's the end of a beautiful day. It's been a successful fishing trip. This is the final proof of success. We've got some friends over. We're going to have them join us for uh, fried trout almondine. We're going to have the baked trout with lemon pepper. We're going to have rice and we're going to have candied carrots. We're going to sit down and have a lot of good fellowship and have a great time. So let's go out and let's serve everyone up. Well, for dinner, I've got Dan, the cameraman's family here with me. Dwayne and Mona Ostrom are joining us. And it's a beautiful evening. I'm going to take my apron off, relax, have some fellowship with some really good friends, and enjoy this meal together. One of the things that we always do at the Nelson household is we pray and say thank you to the Lord for all of his good provisions. Father, thank you for this meal. Thank you for this beautiful weather. Thank you for the opportunity to go out and catch fish. And Lord, we ask you to bless this meal. We ask you to bless the fellowship that we have together and help us to be a thankful people because all blessings come from your hands. We give you praise in Jesus' name.